prepare yourself. This is going to be a good one. Please enjoy this music as we prepare to start our broadcast. Stand it. Yeah. 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 All the praises 
in the house. Let me see your hands. Come on. Let me see. Let me see your hands. Come on. Let me see. Let me see you do that dance. Come on. Let me see. Let me see you do your jam. Let me see. Feel it. Feel it. Uh, rock me. Hey. Rock me. Rock me. Rock me. Come on. Yeah, what you want, you can have. Uh, what you want, you can have. Uh, I'm in a stand. Uh, come on. in you will soon be done. Yeah. Right. Don't you worry, my friend. Hold your head up high. You may be alone, but the Lord is right by your side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome to another weekly, uh, let me get this right, welcome to another weekly Serene Sabbath broadcast. As history describes Hebrew tradition, Israelites would go into the synagogue to read and hear the word of God as it was orally passed down from generation to generation. Likewise, every week we read a selected scripture from the word of God with light discussion. The objective is to give you a dose of God's word and cause you to subsequently study yourself to show thyself approved. 
comments are welcomed and I will always do my very best to respond either during the broadcast or post broadcast to God be the glory serene Sabbath is a weekly broadcast where I share my thoughts opinions and facts on scripture it is not intended to degrade or refute anyone or any organization my only motive is to share what I feel what has been shared and taught to me by way of the spirit of the Most High God as I present both fact and faith it is my desire that you desire the sincere fruit of God in your studies and life experiences for those of you that are joining me for the first time feel free to follow me on Facebook and YouTube on Facebook you can search for Stone Quest Chronicles and you will find my page select the like icon if you're on YouTube search for Linnell D white the third to find my channel select the subscribe icon and choose a notification setting so that you will know when I am live when I'm on live or when I have uploaded a new video the links to my Facebook page and YouTube channel are in the description of the video welcome back we've been away from you uh, for a little while um, but uh, now um, I will tell you this um, as I present this particular serene Sabbath we're in a transition between volume 5 and volume 6 um, when we go into uh, we just got through talking about um, we just got through talking about in volume 5 uh, God and his delegation uh, and godly delegation and godly uh, uh, action when we go into um, when we go into volume 6 we're going to be talking about uh, godly I'm sorry I, I got that wrong we were talking about godly wisdom and godly authority in volume 5 when we go into volume 6 we will be talking about professional excellence and the Christian officer and we're going to actually term that as professional excellence and the Christian uh, the, the Christian itself or, or the, the, the Christian um, believer if you will okay the Christian believer that's what we'll title that one so this one is going to be a very interesting broadcast um, this is going to challenge your your thoughts and thinking on traditional uh, religious um, religious services uh, religious practices uh, religious tradition <clears throat> again I am not uh, trying to degrade or, or demote anything that anyone believes out there I'm never trying to do that in fact I'm always open to learning which is what has brought me to this broadcast and the information that I'm going to present uh, so uh, I, I want you to the if you if you find it uh, in your capability to keep an open mind and I've placed some references in the description of this video uh, to, to aid if you want to do some research yourself and I encourage you to do that always every time we do a serene broadcast don't just take my word for it find out what God is saying to you about the matter okay this is just what God has presented and said to me <clears throat> so um, this may be a little long uh, but I'll try to keep it as short as possible. All right. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm certain that this is going to, um, this is actually going to, to prompt you to want to go look at a few things. Um, because it is not your normal everyday presentation of scripture. All right. So, uh, what I like to do is first present a couple of anchoring scriptures for this broadcast and then I'm going to run through uh, all of the information that 
I, I have uh, to present on today. Um, the first, and as I set this up, I probably should have done this before, um, but the, the first uh, scripture that I want to try to bring to you, let's see here, let me make sure I got this right. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to use just this one scripture to anchor us, and then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to try to read all of these anchoring scriptures. I just want to make sure I have them uh, listed. Um, and I think I'm ready now. So, uh, the first scripture... Uh, if you want to write these down, uh, we're going to read Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, and then we're going to uh, read uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11, and then we're going to read Mark chapter 2, verses 27 and 28. And so, let us begin. Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 simply says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. And so with that being said, um, the title that we're going to use today is going to be um, Sabbath. This is all about uh, the, the Sabbath, okay? And uh, this being serene Sabbath, uh, I've, I've come to a point, let me just parenthetically pause, uh, I've come to a point to where there is a bit of a, <clears throat> a bit of a, a shift, if you will, um, in how serene Sabbath broadcast will, will continue. All right, so let me read, um, let me continue and read Exodus chapter 20, verse, verses 8 through 11. It reads, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath, the seventh, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thou sons, nor thy daughters, thy manservants, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. This is a very uh, important scripture to remember as we go through this, right? Because it also mentions cattle and stuff like that. Uh, for in the sixth day, last verse, in the sixth day, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea in six days. I'm sorry. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that, all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it and hallowed it. I want you to keep in mind that notice uh, the Sabbath day uh, as the term was not stipulated in Genesis, uh, but there's a reason why they call it the Sabbath day, and we're going to talk about that, and it all has to do with the etymology of the word and uh, what, it, what, it, what the word actually means. And so let us read the, the last two verses, okay? Um, and then we'll continue with our discussion about these. And there's many, many verses that we're going to go over. So prepare to write down, prepare to come back and look at this video and review it and go through it. And, and just, uh, uh, I ask that you, you look at, uh, the logic. It's the principle that we're getting to. Okay. The principle. So, uh, Mark chapter two, verse 27 and he said, these are the words of, of Jesus Christ. And he said unto them, 
the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man, and I want you to key on this because this is going to be important. I'm, I'm going to bring in a, 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 a side note on that. The Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. All right. So those are our anchoring scriptures. So I want you to, to key in on those uh, scriptures as we go through this. We're going to start off talking about the Sabbath and um and it's amazing as I, I've continued to learn and stayed open um, to scripture and to how the spirit is working through others. Um, this, this really uh, stumbled upon me and, and I saw the criticality of this. And we're going to talk about right now um, the origins of the Sabbath and why, then why it's so important. And then we're going to look at some aspects of the Sabbath and... Uh, again, uh, have an open mind and don't take this as me refuting anyone else's um, perspective on this because God in his infinite wisdom has given us the, 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 the power of choice. Okay, so um, those who choose otherwise in the topic that I'm talking about, that's, that's their God-given right to do so. Um, but... Uh, as in all things, so is so is sin. Anything that we do uh, is our God-given right. There are consequences to those things, and so our uh, modus operandi, uh, operandi here is to present things that we believe the Most High has commanded us to do, and that we should do our very best to 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 keep those commandments. And so I'm going to present you a perspective on his commands. And, and please, at any time, feel free. Uh, we're live right now on uh, both Facebook and YouTube. Feel free to, to, uh, to, to comment. And as I said, I'll, I'll, I'll try to comment uh, to respond to those comments um, during the broadcast. But if not, certainly at, uh, sometime after the broadcast, I will comment. And, and, and feel free to, to share some likes. Somebody start a, a watch party. This is going to be a good one. Uh, feel, feel free to, to share, like, give thumbs up, and, and all that good stuff. So let us, let us jump right in. Okay, let us jump right in. We're going to start from the very beginning. All right, let us do that. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God um, the spirit of God let me pull the scripture up here the spirit of God right um, moved upon the face of the waters notice darkness is here already darkness is here already okay and God said, let there be light. <clears throat> and God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So God created this thing called light. Darkness was already there. Okay. But God then creates light. And then he caused the light to separate separate this has brought me back to another scripture that i need to put in here and i, I will i'm going to put the uh, show you something that's awesome about this particular piece the light to separate um uh he, from the darkness right then he called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day now what i want to, 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 to probe into your mind right here is notice how the words day and night are names for things. Light is called day. Darkness is called night. Okay? These are names of things. Contrast that to how we use these words today to indicate uh in the 24-hour period that man has established. 
these, 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 the, the day and the night. Notice how, like, when we pick a particular day, let's call it Tuesday, all right? And there's a whole nother video that talks about these names and all that stuff. But notice when darkness comes, we don't call it Tuesday night. We don't call it Tuesday night. And notice that God said the evening and the morning were the first day. Little d. Same Hebrew word, but little d. Okay? So, what I started to wonder was, okay, God, what does this really mean as we understand and comprehend the days in modern day, in modernity? Um, should we be turning uh, the, the, when once darkness comes, should that be called night instead of, right, instead of day? Um, and so... And, and of course, remember, we all have, have options and, 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 and the, 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 the power of, of choice. And, but this is the, the established um, connotation for how days are referenced in modernity. But, but look at this. This is what's done on the first day. All right. Now I want to draw your attention. This light is something other than what we feel it is today. Because this is what was done on the first day. All right? And he called this, this existence, this environment, where light and darkness existed together, he then separated them, called the part of this existence where there was light, day, called the part of this existence where there was darkness, night. Now let's go all the way down to the 13th verse. He did a lot of creating in between uh, day one and day uh, three, right? But then in the 14th verse, and God said, let there be lights. Now notice this light is Hebrew 3974, all right? The light that we... We're talking about up here um, is Hebrew 2.16. What is the difference? What, what, what's the difference? What's Hebrew 2.16? Let's look at Hebrew 2.16. And uh, it is the word or. Notice it comes from 2.15. All right. Notice it comes from 2.15. Right. It means light of day. Um, being, you know, adjectively described by the word day, he called it day. And then when you go to 215, you see that's the primary word. It means to become light, to shine, right? Um, to be illuminated, right? Now, when I see this, I think about God's Shekinah glory, right? The, 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 the day he called was called, was named, was the name given for light, right? Uh, or, um, O-R-E, remember the word orb, if you will, and how we talk about the, the, the noun, the thing called an orb, right? Uh, but these are, while they're, 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 they're certainly uh, spelled in Hebrew and, and, and sound in Hebrew the same, um, uh, they're, they're two different words. And so you got to think about language and why they're two different words. How can they be sound the same, but be two different words, um, but be the same word, if you will, uh, a very connected word, if you will. Okay. So let's go back down that light to 16 compared to the light that is in verse 14. Okay. The lights that he he flung um, into the firmament. And we won't talk about the firmament right now, but that's a good topic of discussion. But let's look at this word, these lights, 
right? May or. Notice how it is similar to the original word of light, may or, right? Uh, this is this is Hebrew uh, 3974. But notice how it has its light luminary, a different word now in Hebrew, but it also goes back to 215. So it's similar. It gives an illumination, it, it, but it sprouts differently from the prime root word. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that because these lights are different. Okay. And we're going to talk about how these lights are. So we have this light and darkness that God created. And then that light is called day. The darkness is called night. Now we have these other lights that are linked to both uh, uh, light and darkness. Uh, linked to those things that are called night and day. Uh, but they're in the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be signs. And for seasons and for days and years. So now we see that there are some things that God created in the fourth day that get associated to light and darkness, day and night, that actually divides them. What does that mean? That means before the fourth day, light and darkness was not divided. What kind of environment could we comprehend? Where night and day, uh, 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 light and darkness existed together, but yet be separated and then not be divided, right? Divided until day four. There's a phenomenon on the earth where, where fresh water and salt water meets. Now, those two things are separated at that point on earth but what divides them that's a nature thing here god is flung up into the firmament things that will now divide those things that are separated okay into so that you can you can actually differentiate it is not one thing okay they differentiate both light and darkness, both day and night, right? And, and, and so we wonder and we look at Christ and we say, well, well, how can he be separated but not divided? <laughs> how can Christ be separated from God but not divided? So here you see how how. Light is the thing that God created. God does not articulate a creation of darkness. He just says darkness was there. But light was created. Okay? And, and, and so, let me jump forward a little bit and say that Christ was then created. And, and, and Christ is, is, is still a part of, of, of God. But at this point, there is a division physically but only a separation spiritually I don't know if you caught that I don't know if you caught that the same environment is there spiritually but it's still God but now you see the division because he is man on earth let me, let me, we're going to get there we're going to get there we're going to get there and again, these, these, this is my comprehension of, of, of what the Most High has shown me. Okay, so I'm not refuting anyone. I'm just proposing a, a different logic, spiritual logic, if you will, on on the reality of this. So notice this now uh, uh, these lights, right? And in in the, these these lights, these other lights that have been thrown up. So now notice there are two lights that have been flown up, that divide the day from the night. So even in darkness, there is a light there. And we're going to read that. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day 
and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Here's 215 again. That's that original one, 215. Okay, so that, that, that illumination is to be shown upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Yes, yes, yes. So let, let, let's stop before we go any further. Let, let, let's just, just think about this thing. Okay. So. What we know and see is the sun and the moon. Both of them are light. The moon is also light. But it was there, put there to rule, okay, to rule the night. And if it is ruling the night, which is the name for something, it is to rule darkness. Okay? The moon is set there to rule the darkness. And the sun is set to rule the day. Oh, so what happens when you see both the sun and the moon out at the same time? The sun is the greater light. The moon is the lesser light. Doesn't mean it's not great. I believe it's great also because it is put in a position to rule. To rule the night. So that day which also talks about the light. As you transition from sun to moon, light is still there, but there's a division. There's a division and a transition of power, if you will, where the sun transitions rule, ruleship, let me create a word, the rule of this environment from the light to the darkness, the sun to the moon, okay? And I want you to notice again what it says. It says the evening and the morning were the first or now here the fourth day. Notice how God articulates the day as going from evening to morning. And what do we reference as evening unto morning? That's when the moon is ruling. And then there's a period of pure darkness. And then the morning, the sun takes over and rules. So I wonder if we got this thing backwards. I wonder if we got this thing backwards on how we see a day. Ah, but remember, these lights, the sun and the moon and the stars, were put up there for signs. Okay, remember, they're up there to, to, to indicate and to provide us signs for seasons, for days, and for years. It's a sign no different than then when we see a stop sign or a, a traffic light or a mile marker on the road, okay? Or even the, the signs when the grass turns from green to brown or brown to green, when leaves change their colors. These are all signs. And so the sun and the moon and the stars are up there for these same things. But specifically for seasons, and for days and for years. So our days and years, they should be marked by what we see in the sky. Those lights that God has flinged up in the firmament. And so with that in mind, with that in mind, we know that eventually, eventually, God turned and stopped creating and rested. So here's the word orb 216. Okay, we went over that, that light. 
And then uh, here, here's the darkness, right? This is what darkness means. It's obscurity. So it's a secret place. It's darkness. If you can, and I know our way, our minds are, are so far away from God. We can't, we can't understand this, but I'm going to show you an example that can, that can give you maybe some tangible evidence on how this can, can possibly be because <clears throat> this is darkness and light existing at the same time. All right. But then divided eventually on the fourth day by the sun and the moon and notice how the existence of light and darkness was before the sun and the moon was created how could this possibly be but according to the scriptures it is so all right and here is yom that's what day means right that's what day means um and and, and so um and you're going to see that word yom come up again later on we start digging into the sabbath the word night right night uh, in it, in its uh definition okay etymology uh and then we get to chapter two where we get to the seventh day all right on the seventh day god ended his work which he had made and he rested i want you to remember that word too on the seventh day from all his work, 439, 4399, right, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. It was blessed and it was sanctified. And because that in it he had rested, again, from all his work, which God created and made. So now <clears throat> you wonder if he rested. What, where does this term Sabbath come in, right? Where does this term Sabbath comes come in to, to, to play, all right? So I want you to see that the word rested, right? Hebrews 76, 73 is the word Sabbath, Shabbat, which is actually what you're going to see when we get to the word Sabbath. It means to cease, to cease, to rest. And when we get to the word Sabbath, you're going to see that's, this is the prime word that the word Sabbath comes from. But because of how it is applied, they no longer use the word rest. They could say this is the day of rest, and they often do. Um, but it is called, they gave it a name. They gave that name, a special name, called Sabbath. Okay? Um, this prime root uh, meaning to sanctify the, 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 the Sabbath, the seventh day, this day of rest. We'll call it a day of rest right now. We're going to get to why it's called Sabbath. It, it, it's, 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 it was, it was, it was sanctified, right? Um, and so that word, uh, let's go back and show you six, uh, Hebrew 69, 42, um, Hebrew 69, 42, uh, Let's go to it, um, where uh, he sanctified it, 6942, that's sanctified, okay? That word, um, sanctified, is the Jewish word kardesh, right? And it means to consecrate, sanctify, prepare, dedicate, um, to be holy, be hallowed, right? So let's look up some of those words. And see what that really means. We can throw that word out there and say it's sanctified. And we believe we know what it is. And I'm not saying we're right or wrong. I'm just saying let's look at what it actually means. Even in our English definition. Without even talking about what it could possibly mean. You know in, in Hebrew dialect in its intentions. Um, so <clears throat> the word sanctify means to consecrate. You're going to see some of these same words. Um, to be, you know, holy, uh, but it comes from the word saint. We know that word saint. We use that word all the time. The, the, the Catholics uh, name people as saints. Um, uh, uh, Protestant Christians uh, re refer to fellow Christians as saints of God, right? Uh, so saints um, meaning sacred, right? So that means it's sacred, uh, consecrated, holy. Uh, living a sacred life, if you will, um, uh, being a person of extraordinary holiness, okay, um, liking them to uh, the, the character of Jesus Christ in, 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 the, in the scripture, okay, and then consecrate, right, to make holy, 
right? To make to make holy, right? Um, to be con, uh, to to make declare or declare sacred, right? Sacred is to declare sacred, right? Um, together, the word con, sacred together, to holy make sacred. Um, and then, of course, when you look at the word sacred, um, you see that it means to make holy. So these, these this makes sense, right? And and we can find some uh, some linkage to how we interpret that word. Um, here's the word kodesh again: um, holiness, right? Holiness, sacredness. Okay. Um, and, and then hallowed. We use that word to make it hallowed, right? We we say um, even in the prayer that 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 is given to us in the word. We say that 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 God is you know hallowed is Thy name, right? Holy is is His name, right? And holy actually means um, means uh, to to be of good health, right? It is healthy, right? It, it is it is is wholesome and healthy meaning uh we turn to be in good health um in medical terms um we know that health if we want it to be good it means everything is operating as it should as it was intended all right and if we take this all the way back to antiquity the way god created it that's healthy that's holy to live in that way Okay, so now with that in mind, we see um, that uh, uh, this day, the seventh day, was intended to make yourself come back together. God stopped doing his work and he made himself, you know, holy or, or healthy, if you will, again. But you got to ask the question, can God be unhealthy? And he can't. Right? God, at least that's what I believe. So, what does this mean? Right? What it means is everything that he has set in place as he's created in its optimum health, that's been done. It ceased. No more creation. There's nothing else to be created. So on this day, he is not doing any more creation. It is all healthy. It is all whole. Now, remember, created these lights to the firmament for seasons, signs for seasons, days, years. All right, and I'm gonna get to my 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 what I call my thesis for this at the end. But I don't believe this was just all about days as we live through it now. See, this creation is before the fall. So, as we see time, that did not exist. Notice God didn't create time. These are seasons. Time has only come into existence because... We live these seasons where there's life and then life is no more as we know it on this plane of existence. So, but in the beginning, the, 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 the wholeness, right? Sabbath is to, to, to bring things together in wholeness. So I want you to think about this and, and, and I'm leaning into my thesis at the end, when I talk about Sabbath, there, there's a Sabbath that is spiritual and there is a Sabbath that we must observe the spiritual Sabbath in a fleshly way, okay, so that we honor God. And we do that because he commanded us to do that because that's something that he didn't want us to forget and is something that in his laws for us to live, it was very important. So let's 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 jump into this. Let's 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 jump in into uh, his commandment for for the Sabbath, right? 
He, he created his day of rest. But, but then uh, God gave, um, gave uh, in his commandments, he said, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. It's already holy. Sabbath is supposed to be holy. But he said, remember it to keep it. Why? Because that reminds us of how this existence was whole. On that seventh day, the, the, we, we came into this existence that was whole after everything that needed to be created was created. Okay? But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. We're going to get to that. Nor thy sons, nor thy daughters, thy manservant, nor thy man maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So, God has instituted since man has fallen. How can you create the Sabbath when you're no longer in a Sabbath existence since you've fallen? But remember, there are some things he created that are still there. And there's some things that help that help you indicate when this time is. And now he's commanded what you should do in that time. We're trying to be like him. We're trying to rest. Well, what does it mean to rest? Here's the word Sabbath, 76, 73. Sabbath, that's where that day comes from, that rest day. That's the linkage, right? Uh, that's why they, they use the word Sabbath. They call that day of rest Sabbath. And, and here is the, the next word, Sabbath, the observance. Uh, Sabbatism, right? A weekly Sabbath, right? But notice, this weekly Sabbath is not based on a time. It's based on the signs. The sun and the moon, okay? Now, what about what what happens? See, there was no need for atonement when God created everything, but because of man's fall, now there's a need for atonement. And during the Sabbath, okay, we're going to look at this word atonement. During the Sabbath, what is actually happening? Because man fell, now in order to, uh, to rightfully observe the Sabbath, you must atone for the sin that took you out of the Sabbath existence. Took us out of the Sabbath existence. So let us look at this word, atonement. Kippur. Ha! This should bring up the Hebrew celebration and feast day called Yom Kippur, right? Day of Atonement, and it is on a Sabbath. Remember, Yom, that's the day. That means day, Yom, okay, Kippur. Let me go back to it. Nope, that's Kadesh. Let me go back to it. Let me find it for you. Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath. Kippur. Yom Kippur. Okay. That is atonement. So, what God intended to be a, a, a day of holiness where you are brought back into wholeness. Now, because of sin... In order to be brought back into wholeness, sin must be atoned for. Okay? Now let's look at that word. Atonement. Now, this is why I love English because, you know, we we don't pay attention en enough to, to this, 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 this language that we got. But it's right in front of us. It tells us exactly what it is. Okay? Um... Words are very powerful. Words are, are very powerful. Okay? Now, of course, the word mint, when you put these two words, atone and mint, right, 
It is reconciliation. We are recon reconciling ourselves back to the most high. All right. Now, <clears throat> just to go into this backwards, mint, right? When you use, put the word mint on the end of something, okay, it means it indicates the result of something, right? Of a product, the result or product of an action, okay? Well, what is that action uh, that, that, that results into something? It is the action of a tone. Now, a tone is two words. It means at and one is right there in the spelling. So this is the result of being in a state of oneness, which is what we have at the end of creation. That's what we have at the end of creation, right? Now, if you're coming back to at one, that means that we are not at one with God anymore. And that's what sin did for us. Sin separated us, divided us indeed from God. So we must be atoned. And that's why we are commanded, right? We are commanded, right? In the Ten Commandments, we are commanded to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy because in those, that season, once the season of work is done, because he also commanded that we would till the ground, there's a, there, there were consequences of sin, all right? But on that seventh day, we got to keep that holy. No work. Remember, these are all commandments. This is Exodus 20 where it talks about the commands, Right? Don't keep, don't uh, 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 take the, the name of the Lord God, uh, thy God in vain. It's a commandment. And here, here's another commandment, right? Keeping the seventh day holy, right? No one should be doing work. Now, let's talk about that word work. <laughs> because there's another place that uses the word work and we're going to get into later. And there's a distinct difference. So what does it mean? And now there are things that you, you can do and can't do. When we get into Christ, we're going to talk about how Christ came and showed us the example of what it means. It goes back to the principle of rest or Sabbath in, in, in distinguishing what is work and what is not work. And here's the controversy that, that took God. It's, it's, it's amazing that of, out of all the commandments that God gave us, the one that took Christ to the cross was this commandment. Not only was it so controversial back then, it is also, in my opinion, the hardest commandment to keep. And the reason why I'm going over this is because I believe it is this commandment that is going to be the most judgmental of us when we see him face to face. Kaddish, consecrate, got to keep it holy, right? Makra, a convocation. Why are we talking about a convocation? Why are we talking about a convocation? Because we have a tradition here in America. And it is a bit, um, and there's some backing to it, right? Um, one of the traditions, as we'll read further, and we're going to get into this, is that uh, the one of the, the, the acts that would happen on Sabbath is that they would get together in the synagogue and read the Word of God. That was an act that they did on Sabbath. Wasn't the only act. Still had to eat, do all these other things. That's where we're going to get into what work means. Okay? But <clears throat> they went to the synagogue, right? And we're talking about a convocation here. And, and, and let's just um, make sure that, that we have proper linkage to this. This is, this is Hebrew 4744. Okay. And this word, right, uh, when, when, you, when you look at it in the sixth day, right, um, let me just find it, talk about keeping it. Um, 
for the sixth day, God, you know, he, he made the heaven, he finished his creation, and he blessed that seventh day, okay? But we are told that, let me just find it, we are told that um, the Sabbath, right, should be a holy convocation uh, unto the Lord. And I am going to have to find it for you. Uh, so here are some of the things that they did on the Sabbath as we go we go through. Um, and you can look up these things and do a search on Sabbath and, and find them. Um, but let me find where it talks about the convocation. Um, remember Holy Sabbath Day? Uh, um, uh, let me continue to read the days made holy. Um, you know, I, I've got it selected. Um, now notice there's some similarities to the word covet too, right? Convocation, but, uh, there's a difference, uh, when you covet something and what you should be coveting, what you should not be coveting. Um, a convocation is where people gather right and that word comes from being covered all right but let me find um convocation uh and i had that scripture labeled uh here we go sixth day uh, this is leviticus chapter 23 verse 3 um six days shall i work right be done but the seventh day is the sabbath of rest and holy convocation Hebrews 47, 44. You shall do no work there in it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Okay. So then this word convocation, right? Uh, Hebrews 47, 44. Okay. Mikra means... To be assembled. It's a sacred assembly. That's what we consider our church services today. Even though it may not be on the right day, which we're going to get into. Right? But but that part is is sound, in my opinion. It's 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 it has strength, right? The assembly of persons, right? A calling or or holding of the meetings. Notice that when they went to the synagogue, that's what that was. That was an assembly of persons. They would go in and read the word of God. Okay. Um, and now the word convocation, uh, masak, right? Uh, when you go back and look at the etymology of it, it's a covered structure, right? We used to call people converts. When they convert, over to Christianity, and some people convert into Islam, some people convert into Buddhism, stuff like that. That's the origins. This is the origins of this word. Convocation. There are organizations that, that hold convocations. All right? Even some uh, fraternal and sororal organizations, they have what's called uh, 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 conclaves. Right? Conclaves. Um and it's all about assembling and being under a cover. Okay? Under cover. So let's get into this <clears throat> further. Right? We see the word Sabbath. And let's, let's see what, what was going on and how did they keep the Sabbath. Right? Moses therefore gave, this is the book of John, chapter 7, verse 22. Moses gave unto you circumcision. Here's it, this, We're going to talk about what's done and what's not done on the Sabbath. All right, because that's important. And then we're going to talk about uh, when, right? We're going to go full circle and then talk about when, because we, we threw these words work out there and stuff like that, right? And so a lot of people like to talk about what you do and what you don't do. And it's very specific about the, the, the it's very specific on the, the character of this day. There's some characteristics about this day that's very important. Right. Moses, therefore, gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. It was tradition, right, to be circumcised. 
and ye on the Sabbath day circumcise man. Okay, so Christ is saying, so you doing circumcision, so why is it okay for you to circumcise if you say that you're not supposed to do any work? Here's the next verse. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, and ye agree angry, and ye are angry, are ye angry at me because, I'm sorry, not broken, are ye angry presents a question. Are you angry at me because I have made a man... Every whit whole, there's that word, whole, on the Sabbath day. Family, that is what the Sabbath day is was created, was made for. That is the pure definition of it. So anything you do to make someone whole, or anything, any creation, whole, you are in right standing with the Sabbath. Now, not that that's the only day you should do it, but this is an activity that is sanctioned to be done on the Sabbath. Doesn't mean you can't do it any other six days, right? For that matter, doesn't really mean that you can't worship the Lord on any other six days. The thing is, there are some things that you should not do on the Sabbath. This is not one of them, okay? This is not one of them. He brought a very good point. And then in John 9, 16, therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. This very thing brought on the division. But this is the very thing that sent Christ to the cross. Because man had placed Sabbath outside of his principle and into a tradition. And because we don't understand always the mind of God, we allow our traditions to drive you and not the, pr the principles of God to drive us. Okay? Not the principles of God. Let's go to Acts 13 and 27. For they that dwell at Jerusalem... And their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath. You are to read the word of God. You are to make people whole. Reading the word of God is part of making people whole. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. Verse 42 of the same chapter. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. They were in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And the next Sabbath, two verses down, the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. So we got that right. Yeah. <clears throat> let's, let's have a service where the word of God is read. Okay, and taught, right, because we're making people hold through the word of God. But guess what? There are other things that you can do that also keep the Sabbath, right? Now, that word work, where no work is supposed to be done, that's this word right here, right? 43.99. We saw that back. Let me see if I can go back to it. 4399. Should not do any work. That's what this is. Okay, 4399. Right? Um 43 Yeah, 4399. All right? And so <clears throat> Now this is 43 Sorry, 4329. Uh, no, I just got I just I just mixed my verses up. Hold on. Let me get to it. Here we go. Forty-three ninety-nine. This is an occupation, business, and we know what business means in America. That means earning wages, money. Ah, money. Don't go to Malachi. Bring your tithes to the storehouse. They didn't say they was doing that on the Sabbath. Didn't say they was doing that on the Sabbath. Who's earning a wage? On their so-called days of worship. 
what what we 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 like to call the Sabbath. Even though even on a calendar day, it's not even the seventh day. Sunday's the first day. We're gonna get into that too. That means you can't send the money to to the church during during the other days. You can do that. Got six other days you can send money into the church. But on that day, it's supposed to be holy. It's a convocation. Okay? Let's look at Mark. This is another one of the scriptures that we talked about. All right? About the Sabbath days. Let me make sure I'm not skipping on the, over any of the other scriptures that I want to. Yeah, let's look at some of these here. Let's look at some of these. Here's Jeremiah 17:24. And it shall come to pass, if ye diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on Sabbath day, but hallow the Sabbath day to do no work. 4399 therein. Okay? And, and you got to understand what's going on in Jeremiah. People was coming in to sell things. They were earning a wage. Now, Jeremiah got so indignated. Yeah, I don't blame them. That they they set up people to guard, make sure it didn't come in and do and, and, and do that. Here's Amos saying, "When will the new moon? Ah, oh, we can ready to get into when these Sabbaths are, right? Outside these things that we call days has been a construct of man. God threw signs up in the firmament to let us know when this these days were, so that we can keep them. Okay." When will the new moon be gone? That we may sell corn. Because the new moon is also a Sabbath. And the Sabbath. That we may set forth wheat. They connected the Sabbath to a new moon. Very important. Very important here. When we get here up in a few more, more minutes. Okay. Making the ephah small. And the shekel great in falsifying the balance by deceit. Matthew 12 and 1. At the time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were hungered. And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Now, they're incorrect here. But, this was the, the catch, if you will. This is this bureaucracy stuff. This is the world. Okay? Trying to use a law to their slant just so they can crucify Jesus. But, the disciples weren't picking corn to earn a wage. They were picking corn to be made whole because they were hungered. Okay, now back in the day when they went with Moses and indeed, um, you know, a different construct back then, even when he was dropping manna, they picked enough on the sixth day so that they wouldn't have to pick it up on the Sabbath. However, they never picked manna to earn a wage. Manna was picked so that they can not be hungered. The God gave them a specific Guidance and in, 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 in instructions for the provision of manna to them. Manna hadn't dropped on the earth since. God produced the manna. The manna wasn't even there. He made it fall. This is different. This is corn that grows. Has to be planted. Grown. This is man's work. Man grew the corn. Okay? But to... Suffice in supply against hungry hunger. Nothing wrong with doing that on the Sabbath. You're not earning a wage. Same chapter 5th verse. Or have ye not read in the law. And here's where he gets them. He say, oh, you're trying to throw that on me. Let me throw it back at you. How that on the Sabbath days, the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath. And are blameless. How do they, prof how do they um, profane the Sabbath? Because... The food and stuff that they ate. They didn't just, just sit there and, and spoil and rotten. They, they, they ate it. And that's all they was doing because they're hungry. Right? That's all this was. Same chapter verse 8. For the Son of Man is the Lord 
even of the Sabbath. Now, I want you to notice that he is the son of man, too. He is the son of man. I'm going to bring something else back to you that's going to be a sort of side branch for something else for you to think about. Let's look at some other locations here. Same chapter, verse 11. And he said unto them, <clears throat> What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep and if it fell into a pit on the Sabbath day, he will not lay hold of it and lift it out. He's saying, so you calling that work too? So I can't save anything? Anyone indeed. How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath. And he gets to the, to the meat of the point. Right, he gets to the meat of the point. The, the, the Sabbath was 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 made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So he says, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man, put a put a bookmark there, is the Lord also of the Sabbath in the book of Mark. Then also in uh, the next chapter, in verse four, he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good? On the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill. If you don't eat, you're killing yourself. You're fasting too, but you're killing the flesh. So, is it good to is is it right on the Sabbath to do good or evil? He he's bringing them back to the principle of what God created for the seventh day, what He established for Sabbaths. It is to make whole. That's the good thing. Remember, each day was good. That same day, that same, that's the Greek word. When you look back at it, it's the same word that's used back in Genesis. And when the seventh day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. We're back at, at church service now. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence have this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? So we're talking about what things are to be done on the Sabbath and shouldn't be done on the Sabbath. Okay? Let's go to the book of Luke 4 and 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up back home, as his custom was, it's a custom. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up for to read. Even Jesus kept the Sabbath. In the same way, it's New Testament. When you talk about, you know, the laws of the Old Testament is done away. Oh, you got to put that in perspective. It's New Testament. Okay. Still keeping the Sabbath. If Christ is keeping the Sabbath, shouldn't we? That's the question. Oh, we think we're keeping the Sabbath. That's the other question. And that's what we're going to get to here in a few minutes. Because you, we may or we may not. Same book, chapter 13, verse 16. I'm for, sorry, 15 and 16. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, talking to the Pharisees, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall? And lead him away to watering. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan have bound low these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? His point is, if your ox or ass can go and be made whole by drinking water, and you lead that animal to do so, What's wrong and how is it out of the principle or commandment of God to loose this woman so that she may be made whole? That's the point. Christ is showing the way. He is showing us the example in ways that we did not quite understand the most high. Okay? So those are some examples on, on how Christ was trying to show 
us what does it mean to keep the Sabbath and make and keep it holy? Does it mean going to church service? Certainly. Does it mean that we shouldn't, you know, make people whole? We, we, we shouldn't do things not to make a wage, but to make them whole. Should we visit the sick and shut in? Should we, um, uh, uh, you know, give alms to to the widows and, and the fatherless. That's making people whole. This is the thing that they use to try to, to corner Jesus into being crucified. And notice, they couldn't even present this to Pilate when they took Jesus there. Now, there are some critical resources. Okay. Now, before I go there, let me, let's 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 go back to um, the episode. I want to revisit right quick before I move on and talk about when I believe the Sabbath is and when we should be keeping the Sabbath in the way that God has instructed us to not earn a wage, um, but do things to 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 make creation whole at one with God again. We talked about how God created, how this whole thing started in establishing day and night, you know, light and darkness. And how could in the beginning light and darkness exist at the same time? And and, and, and then the sun and moon wasn't created until day four. And that's now how we can look up in the sky and articulate um, the, 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 the division of day and night but but before then they were separated but existed at the same time in the same environment let me give you an instruction and thanks god to the most high thank thank you to the most high for showing me this and, and thank you uh pastor quint bowman uh for for letting god use you to bring this out you were preaching about something else and, and god delivered this this to me um in order to, to, to understand this, um, we must go to, and I'm, and I'm going to, I should have pulled this up before, forgive me. Um, um, let, let me, let me go uh, to Moses um, when they were about to cross the Red Sea and, and, and present to you a possible characterization of this environment where light and darkness existed at the same time. <clears throat> okay. We're going to look in the book of Exodus and look at chapter 14, verse 19. All right. Let's look at a little bit before. Okay. Let's set this up. The Egyptians should know that, okay, let, let's, let's set this up. Uh, 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 let's start up here. Um, you know, Egyptians are following them. Most said unto the people, fear not, right? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See, <clears throat> this light and darkness was created so that you can see the salvation of God. Okay. And so when you get to the Sabbath and there's rest, that is also that whole season is so that you can see the salvation of the Most High. All right. The Egyptians, you're going to see no more forever, forever. And here's a sidebar question. If you're not going to see the Egyptians, well, let's let's. let's this shows a little bit of transparency and be be strict to the word. The Egyptians who they saw in that time, all the Egyptians that was fun, you they weren't seen for no more forever, right? The Lord's gonna fight the battle, hold your peace. So God says unto the to Moses, right? Um He says, Wherefore Christ out thee. God is like, look, why, why you, man, what you, what you crying for? I told you what I was going to do. 
Now let me give you some further instructions since you all caught up in your motion. Right? Lift your rod. Stretch it out. Right? And so he divides the sea. He says, I will harden the hearts of each of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will I'm gonna get me honor upon Pharaoh, right? And his chariots and his horsemen. Egyptians are gonna follow you into the war. Now this is what happens. Okay? And the angel of God, the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. Here it is. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And here it is. It was a cloud of darkness to them, the Egyptians. But it gave light. Oh my. There go the words. 215. 28, 22. It gave light by night. To these. So that the one came not near the other. All night. Oh my God. Did, did, you, did you see what I just read? Did you hear it? So, now, brothers and sisters, you can see how, you know, this existence of light and darkness is possible. This is, and guess what? Even though it happened before God created man, before he threw the, 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 the sun, moon, and stars up in the sky, there are some, 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 some family in antiquity that actually saw this phenomenon how it could happen so let's go on to the climax of this Sabbath whole hour and a half here's the deal so there are some resources that talk about um, the the sun and and, and articulate kind of allude to uh, the calendar of God Right, how these lights are given for signs and seasons, how they indicate what the true Sabbath is. Okay, and so I just want to offer you, and there are links to these resources um, in the description of the video. So when you get a chance, please um, take a look at them uh, and look at them. Right, who changed the Sabbath? You know, um, first of all, just pure. If you if you believe that the way the calendar is today is how the calendar is supposed to be. First day is Sunday, last day, seventh day is Saturday. And we already know that we're not worshiping on the Sabbath. Okay? Ain't nothing wrong with worshiping on Sunday. You can do that. You worship them all week long. But are we keeping the Sabbath holy? Are we doing things that are earning wages on the Sabbath? You know what? We ain't got no problem with that because Sunday ain't the Sabbath. You can earn a wage all day long. Take up your tithes. All of that, okay? But truth of the matter is, even if you go with just the, 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 the traditional uh, calendar that we have today, on Saturday, you should not be. And guess what? Most of us don't. But the thing that we probably do, do not do on Saturday is keep it holy. We ain't in the church service. We aren't collectively assembling and reading the word of God. And, 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 you know, becoming one with God again. Totally resting to allow yourself to become one with God again. But here's a, the, the, the URL is in, 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 in the uh, description of the video. But here it talks about how, you know, and there's, there's artifacts out there where the Catholic Church has actually said that they um, believe that they have the power and, and the authority to change the, uh, uh, the worship of God. Um, from Saturday to Sunday. It used to be on Saturday. <clears throat> Back in the day. Um, did the Catholic Church change the Sabbath? You know, there's a there's a the very interesting video on this link. When you get a chance, listen to it. Uh, as you listen to this video, it's further down. I want you to hear, he makes a very good, the guy that's in this video, 
is, is a very good protagonist for Sunday worship and the position of the Catholic Church as it pertains to the worship of God. But if you listen real closely, you will hear the Spirit of God in the Word of God refuting some of the things that is presented. Not that he doesn't have a right to present those things. But if you, when you get a chance, take a look at th this video on this, on this particular uh, resource and, and, and see what the Lord tells you. There are some things that he says in there that, that strictly indicates how it is man that has made these things, not that they're necessarily following the will of the Most High God or the commandment of the Most High God. Now, here's a resource that I think will be very beneficial into understanding um, where I'm, I'm going into with this Sabbath day thing. Um, the Sabbath is, is indicated by the cycles of the moon, the seasons of the moon. All right, when there's a new moon and then after that, uh, the next four seventh day uh, periods, the seventh day periods, those are actually Sabbath. And then after that, a new moon happens again. And then you have another four day Sabbaths after that. The new moon is a Sabbath, but then those following four days, um, seven day increments are Sabbath. Um, go to World's Last Chance. And I'm not saying that I advocate uh, the people on these sites or anything like that. I'm just saying the information helped me to understand um, the, 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 the action that was done on the fourth day in creating. Uh, you can download uh, <clears throat> this calendar. It's an app you can download and put it on your phone. You can even go to, uh, let me go here. You can even go, uh, if you got Google, uh, you have Google Calendar, you can actually go on to um, Google's calendar and add, if you will, um, the cycles of the moon to uh, your Google Calendar. All right. And all it is is when you add other calendars, um, you can go down and add other calendars. There is a phases of the moon, right? There's a phases of the moon um, calendar that you can you can add. And just so you know, today is the 27th, as you can see on my calendar. And it's a full moon. Full moon. Right? Full moon. Um, full moon will represent uh, a, a, a new moon. Okay? And then, uh, guess what? The quarter moon will fall here. Right? On, on, on the 5th. Uh, if you and let me just look right quick because I have the app on my phone uh, I have the app on my phone let me uh, see what that app actually says because it may when you download the app onto your phone you'll literally see uh, when these moons occur right and so yes and it does it, it it concurs. You got a quarter moon. Um, actually, the new moon. Um, what's today? Uh, okay. Yeah. So, it says uh, on here that this is not a, a new moon. Um, but uh, you can go on and look at. You know, look at these things and, and, and use whichever one. I go off of the app on the phone, uh, not necessarily um, the app that's on Google, um, just because I believe that it has uh, relevance. Uh, now, this just finished. A, it's a full moon, not a new moon, a full moon, right? So last night you would have seen uh, a full moon. Uh, you may see it tonight. Then when you go to... The next, uh, the next calendar uh, day, we're going into March. Friday is going to be a quarter moon, and that is lock, stock with the calendar. Lock, stock, and barrel with the calendar. All right, so um, you, can, you can go, and that can help you at least understand um, when by season and by nature and God's creation, when the Sabbath really is. And then now you 
can get some insight into what you should or should not, according to the word of God, um, if you believe in the word of God, um, do on Sabbaths. All right, you can download that. Bill. That's what the app looks like when you pull it down and down. Um, let's look at uh, uh, why, right? We got these changes. We know that that a man has come and changed some things, done things. We we, we know that we're not uh, not know. I I I submit to you that we we don't traditionally worship um, together. On what's called the Sabbath, and and that's probably not more important. What's more important is that we're not keeping the Sabbath. This is the the commandment I believe that we're going to be most judged by uh, when we see him face to face. And if you want to attempt to do that, do this. Uh, understand this: God does not change. All right. Yes, we can change what we do as man all day long, but He does not change. And I really believe that um, that this is critical for us. Now, does that mean that I won't be in at, at Sunday service on Sunday? Nope. Um, I'm going to be at Sunday service on Sunday doing doing uh, what thus said the Lord. But but on the days that I know that God is 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 identified as a Sabbath, I will not be earning a wage. I will not be. I will be doing everything within my power to help. Myself and the creation of God um, become at one with him. All right. Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. He changes not. Even Christ proved that. He continued to go into the synagogue and he kept the Sabbath. Okay. He changes not. All right. Um, let's look at some other key scriptures. About how God does not change. God is not a man. I want you to remember what I what I told you earlier. God talked about when Christ talked about He was the Son of Man. I want you to put this in your. This is this is. I want you. This is going to hit that bookmark, and I want you to go back and study and look at this. And I I'm praying for comments on this topic because this is not the topic for today. But I'm praying for comments on this topic. God is not a man that He should lie. Neither the son of man, that he should repent, hath he said, and shall he not do it, or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? God is not the son of man. So... How do you reconcile that with Jesus calling himself the son of man? He also called himself the son of God. So here's that dichotomy again where the light and the darkness, if you will, how something, not that there's light and darkness in, in, in Jesus or anything like that, but these two things that are separated, but one. These two things that are separated are one. This is how God can be with us on earth, separated from God, the most high, but they're one. Because Christ was both the son of man and he was also the son of God. And guess what? He even said that we are the sons of God. Therefore, shall we bear our cross daily like he did? Oh my, I'm about to start preaching. Let me not do that and go on. Hebrews 6 and 17. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel affirmed by an oath. He doesn't change his word. What he says will be. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. That's an obsolete term. Unchanging, never going to change. Opposite forever is never. This is forever. It's never going. It's just, that means it's never going to change. Okay. First Samuel, giving guidance. If you will fill the Lord and serve Him and obey His voice, 
and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. There's some things that we should continue doing. Okay? There are things that we should never stop doing. Things that we should be continually doing. Right? Acts 12 and 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto the unto God for him. We should never stop praying. We should continue, continually pray, right? Romans 1 and 9, for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make a mention of you always in my prayers, remembering without ceasing your work, Ah, I'm getting ready to talk about that without ceasing your work of faith and the labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. But I thought you said that, you know, we shouldn't work on Sabbath. Oh, this is a different work. This is a different work. Okay. Even when you go heal and stuff like that, that, that is work in the sense of the action, but it is not. You're not obtaining a wage. You're not doing an activity for a wage. There's a difference between, you know, what's called an occupation or what is called being employed. Okay? You can be employed. You can do things and not earn a wage. You can do things and not earn a wage. You can occupy your time without exercising an occupation. Okay. Ah, I know that's 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 rolling around in some people's brains right now. First Thessalonians chapter two. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. We should also be thanking God. That's prayer too. We should be thanking God without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Thessalonians five seventeen. Second Titus. <clears throat> I thank God whom I serve. From my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. We should not forget. Never forget. Never forget. And that, my brethren, brings me to the conclusion. We should never forget. There's things we should never stop doing. Honestly, this here's 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 my thesis right here. I believe that when God created back in antiquity and rested on the seventh, they weren't the 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 what we were supposed to grasp from that was that these were intended to indicate signs, seasons. I believe in our lives. If you go back and do it, and I'm going to do a study on this. I'm going to go, the study I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a predecessor and look for this in one of my other um, uh, sub channels. Um, just another day in the kingdom is probably where I'll put it. Um, but we're going to look at the day of creation and, and look at how that is talking about a, a, a season of seasons, right? And I believe that in our lives, we go through all seven seasons of the season of temporal life okay and we finally enter the seventh season is actually when we enter into that eternal life because then we are atoned in at one with god again but i can't wait to do it i may make that into a sermon that's why i'm going to put it in uh just another kingdom uh, just another day in the kingdom so um i think that's what it is and then so these signs that have been thrown off, we go through these type of sub-seasons of seasons even within a week, within a day, within a month, within a year. Notice it jumps from day to year in the scriptures, right? Jumps from day to year. But the, 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 the new moon represents a sub-partition, um, if you will, of the seasons, right? Of the seasons. So... <clears throat> I believe that on a weekly basis that God has created a sign for us to understand when the Sabbath is. And it has to do 
with the solar loony cycle, all right? And, uh, and you can find those with all this great technology he's allowed us to do it. Actually, you don't need to do technology. You can go outside. That's why he says the day was the evening to the morning because you can go outside in the evening, look up the sky, look at that moon, and tell if it's a Sabbath or not. You don't even need technology. You can tell if it's a Sabbath or not by going outside and looking up on high. Looking unto him who is able to keep us faultless before the throne. Let me not get to the benediction yet. But I believe that that's when Sabbath off. So in manner, from this point on, I'm going to be presenting these broadcasts and uh, putting them out uh, during what I feel is God's Sabbath days. Every new moon and every Sabbath Four Sabbaths following that new moon. And I'm going to, um, if you just for those who may not want to download the app or anything like that, I'm going to put out on my uh, Facebook page um, when these broadcasts will, will be. I'm going to put them on the calendar. So if you join, subscribe, Stone Quest Chronicles, you will see and get indication that you know a, a Serene Sabbath is going to be broadcast on this day. And it will be in accordance with the uh the uh what i feel is god's holy sabbath okay so with that being said and, and, and again i'm telling you and i challenge you this is, uh, i'm gonna call this is a sabbath challenge okay you too look it up set those days and i challenge you now let me be transparent I'm kind of in control of my own work schedule. So it, it isn't that much of a stretch for me to make sure that I'm not earning wages on a Sabbath. That I am doing everything I can to help myself and all of God's creation atone back to him. But for those of you who work for someone else, I challenge you. Go back and revisit your contracts your hiring statements and you know it ain't like the, you, you know your sabbath may not fall on the same day every week but it is predictable it is predictable you can get this app you can download it and you can submit to them these days i cannot work i cannot work so i challenge you to do that this is just me I hope this has been edifying. I hope I, I am challenging you all to, to dig deep into this. This is why, I honestly, um, even though, you know, in the future when people look at this, they'll be able to look at it consecutively. But, uh, you know, I've been off the air for a while. I had to really dig into this. I, I had some personal questions that challenged me in this. Okay? And I'm at a point now to where I'm going to do my best to take on this challenge. And do what I feel that thus says the Lord. Now, if you don't feel God is telling you this in this way, it's no problem. I am not judging you. The only person that will ever judge is God. The Most High will, is the He is the judge, and He will judge. Okay, but if it don't matter which day you do it on, and you have some logical evidence to where in this commandment you might be getting it wrong, and you could do it in a way that has a high probability of being right according to the most high. Not according to me, according to the most high. Then why not try it? What does it hurt? What, what does it hurt if you worship both on, on Sunday and on, you know, the most high's Sabbath? What does it hurt if you worship on Saturday for those who are Saturday you know, service worshipers and the Most High God. Guess what? Some sometimes the Sabbath is going to fall on those days. Sometimes the Sabbath is going to fall on those days because it moves, because the cycle, the timepiece, if you will, not for us, because there is no time with God. You got to remember, we are operating in time. When He created these things, time wasn't even a word. There is no time for Him. So these are the signs for these seasons, days, and years. 
okay? What does it matter if you assemble twice a calendar day week? Is God worth it? That's the question. Do you believe the most high is worth what we have to endure as time? Because he don't have to. I'm about to sign off. Please don't forget to follow me on Facebook and YouTube. On Facebook, search for Stone Quest Chronicles and you'll find my page. Select the like icon. On YouTube, search for Linnell D. White III to find my channel. Select that subscribe icon and choose the notification setting so you will know when I'm on live or when I have uploaded a new video. Alternatively, you can use the links to my Facebook page and YouTube channel that are in the description of this video. Feel free to like, subscribe, uh, give thumbs up, share these videos at your leisure. Share them, start a watch party and share them uh, at your leisure. I will be grateful for your time and participation. Check out my Bible study video titled Sabbath Principles of Rest. This is a good companion video for this video in and of itself. So, uh, and, and you can check that out at your earliest convenience. Our mission is to awaken the minds of God's people and to open their spirits to the performance, person, and promises that awaits those who follow the ways of Christ. The kingdom of God is at hand. Emulate the character of Christ. Go and proclaim the kingdom. Replicate the will of the Most High and populate the kingdom with citizens. Thank you very much for joining me on this week's Serene Sabbath. Hope to see you on, on the uh, next broadcast. And may God richly bless you all, my beloved.